Hello there. We have things to address. Hi. Hello, 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 hello. So the rainbow lights are still up. Here's the thing. I have had people tell me that it's very Christmassy, which, you know, valid. I get it. We have rainbow lights at Christmas, but also we have white fairy lights at Christmas. Why are white fairy lights allowed all year round, but rainbow fairy lights is considered just exclusive for Christmas? So I've decided I want rainbow fairy lights on my bookshelves. Uh, one, because gay. Two, because Joyce Byers. So we're running with it. This is the vibe. It's cosy. It's cute. I love it. And things, time doesn't exist in these areas. So, you know, in these days. So rainbow fairy lights two it is 4 30 p.m in the uk i'm probably not the best lighting but i have no motivation due to this lockdown and shielding so i'm not getting my box lights out three i cut my hair pandemic hair crisis we love it four i bought some sapphic books in this lockdown because if you can't cut your hair and buy gay books, what's the point? Yes, this is a book haul, if you hadn't guessed. We're gonna get into this lovely pile of books, which I ordered, I'm excited about it. Very excited to read these in the month of February, possibly. I'm not gonna give myself any promises. Have I read in January? Not really. The first thing we have is The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagoner. C. Duh, C.M. Wagoner, I was, I was correct. This is a book which was new out in January and I actually hadn't heard of until I was looking through gay books to read in 2021 lists because it's like all I want for this year is like horror, sci-fi and gay. Like that's just me. Sparks light in this enchanting fantasy novel from the author of A Natural Magic when a down and out fire witch and young gentlewoman join forces against a deadly conspiracy. Just Oh, it's everything I love. Delaria Wells, petty con artist, occasional thief, and partly educated fire witch is behind on her rent in the city of Lies Court again. Then she sees the wanted sign seeking female persons of martial or magical ability to guard a lady of some importance prior to the celebration of her marriage. Delhi fast walks her way into the job and joins a team of highly peculiar women tasked with protecting their wealthy charge from unknown assassins. Delhi quickly sets her sights on one of her companions, the confident and well-bred Wynne Canalium. The job looks like nothing but romance and easy money until things take a deadly and undead turn. With the help of a bird-loving necromancer, a shape-shifting schoolgirl and an ill-tempered reanimated mouse named Buttons, Delhi and Wynne are determined to get the best of an adversary who wields a twisted magic and has friends in the highest of places. This sounds really cool. Uh, really cool like I saw it on this list went straight onto Waterstones got it I just the cover is gorgeous and it just sounds so fun and just like everything that I'm gonna love it's also a floppy paper bag and I love a floppy paper bag so I'm very excited then we have a book which I have only had on my kindle up until this point now I have a physical edition that is These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling I think I have spoken about this book before but here it is physical copy excited so this focuses on hannah who lives in salem massachusetts and she is like a real deal elemental witch but she has the like guarding her secret is really important if she uses her magic in front of a non-magic person then she has the potential to lose it which obviously she doesn't want to have so she spends a lot of time avoiding her ex-girlfriend who is also an elemental witch i believe hanging out with her best friend and also working at the fly by night cauldron selling candles and crystals um to tourists and wiccans and people that are interested but dealing with her ex-girlfriend is the least of hannah's worries when dark magic starts to appear all over salem we like this is one which like very excited to have a physical copy of i heard about it last year and it just was really really cool so i'm so glad i have this copy um and again it's a floppy we love a floppy paperback don't we then i have some middle grade lgbtq plus books um, but and i'm really excited about lgbtq plus middle grade especially sapphic books because there's just not a lot of them um so i'm really excited they're by the same author they're both by meg grehan who is an author that i learned about recently and i just believe it's really important to have stories exploring so many different types of people and sexualities and identities at such a young age because 
people need to have things that they can relate to and that they understand so i think that these are really important so this focuses on stevie stevie is 11 she doesn't know about the fish in the sea she doesn't know about the constellations in the sky but she also doesn't know why she feels this way about her best friend chloe and i didn't realize that this is kind of written in like not like poetry form but almost kind of like like lyrical so i'm really excited to read this it sounds really 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 good um and definitely something which i wish i had when i was a little bit younger this one is not middle grade it focuses on beth and she decides that she is going to spend it's new year and she's going to spend the whole year inside of her house and it focuses on like her mental health and dealing with that and i think there are aspects of ocd there's a lot of talking about organization and routine and how she feels and what came before and as someone who has anxiety and OCD uh, and also mild agoraphobia um which is something I haven't really spoken about uh but is a thing which I have so this is really interesting to me so she plans to spend the year in and doesn't factor in mouse who is an animal and who isn't a mouse I think it's I think mouse is a cat but I might be mistaken but an animal comes to the window to kind of like nosy in the house and mouse's owner alice kind of comes to see like to get mouse and kind of worms her way into beth's life um and it is friendship and support and how that can really help with uh mental health and dealing with mental health so um i'm really 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 looking forward to reading this one i think i'm actually going to read this one very soon um i'm really really looking forward to it because it just sounds wonderful then i have two nina lacour books i have watch over me and hold still Lena Lacour, I can never say her name like because it's Nina Lacour, is one of my favourite LGBTQ plus authors. I absolutely love all of her books and I'm so excited to get these two. So this focuses on Mila and Mila has just graduated high school so she has aged out of the foster system and she takes on a teaching job. Um, and so taking on the job means that she is going to be moving to a very isolated part of the Californian coast. Here she's hoping that she's going to find a new home, like a finally live somewhere that's a house and her home. Um, but the, and whilst it is a refuge for her, it is haunted by the past and then her own past kind of comes out and up. And the thing I really love about Nina Lacour's books is that she does have a really interesting exploration of who you were and who you are and how the past can impact you um so this is one I'm really looking forward to reading and I think it's going to be really really good when I first read Nina Lacour books um I read We Are Okay and I was like I did not appreciate it and then when I reread it I just realized how um, like amazing and phenomenal it was so I've read her books since and I just absolutely love her so really excited to read that one as well I feel like it has similar vibes then, like I said, we have Hold Still, and this focuses on Ingrid and Caitlin. Ingrid tells Caitlin, I will go wherever you go, um, but that was actually not true, and Ingrid then actually takes her own life, and her suicide completely shatters Caitlin, and she just doesn't know what to do. She's completely unsure of her life now without her friend without all of these things that they loved and what she's supposed to do without her but Ingrid has left a goodbye in her journal stories and letters and writings and and all of these things so so Caitlin kind of goes through Ingrid's last days and moments and sort of try, uses that to try and find hope and renew feelings that she had to see this story and, and everything that Ingrid has created this one might be quite triggering so definitely take caution when reading it but it is one that I'm really looking forward to reading and I think that it's going to be really important and if it's anything like what Nina Lacour has written before I think she's going to have done it phenomenally. Then finally this isn't particularly a sapphic book but I got The Stonewall Riots coming out in coming out in the streets by Gail A. Pittman. That was a lot of words and this is a non-fiction book documenting the Stonewall Riot. So for those that may not know, the Stonewall Riots took place in June 1969 in the Stonewall Inn in New York City. That is what started one of the biggest gay rights movements and riots and protests um, and it it's why Pride is in June and it's how laws came into place and rights for gay people because there was a raid in the Stonewall Inn because at the time being gay was like illegal and in so many places 
um, so many more places than it still is now. I think it's still important to remember that it is still illegal in 72 countries, so the work is not done. Um, but Stonewall was a very, very, very important and pivotal part of history. And it's important to remember that the original Pride was a riot. Um, and that is what we should be remembering. Um, and this is kind of America from the 1800s and gay America and leading up to 1969 and real life events and accounts and lots of different stories. It's a non-fiction book and non-fiction um, LGBTQ plus books are something that I definitely need to read more of. Um, you know, I'm constantly trying to educate myself about uh, this history. I think it's just really important to know all aspects of the LGBTQ plus history and how that has um, impacted and, and the the impact it's had on the world so I'm really looking forward to reading this one too. So, I got, so that was some LGBTQIA books that I got recently. I'm really really excited to delve into them. I'd love to know if you guys have read any of them. What would you recommend I start with? Did you like them? What did you think? Let me know in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new here then I make videos a couple of times a week about books and fandom things so if you want to stick around and join us feel free to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and as usual all the links to my other social medias and also my Stranger Things podcast are in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're doing really, 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 really well and I will see you next time. Goodbye!